Hi. Today I'm going to show you how to make pigments from the earth. I don't always go about things the usual way. I do have a list. Snow is coming. I need to get ready. Before this video is over, I'm going to burn this tree. I'll get to that. But first, a return to the quarry. Yes, I've been here before. From public records, the mine is listed as an active open strip mine used for road construction. It's a good idea to ask permission from the landowners, local authorities before digging. No one's here today, so I think I'm good. <clears throat> Cut into the Ozark mountainside, this strip, it reveals the geology of the area in time. 542 million years ago, during the early Paleozoic era, this land was not yet land, but a shallow sea. The sea accumulated layers of sand, a combination of silica, various minerals, and the fragments of past life forms. These layers slowly compress in cement, becoming sedimentary rock. It took millions of years for the ocean to recede and the mountains to rise upward into a plateau. The black layer is shale, composed of the decomposed organic life forms from the eons past. The yellows and oranges are ochre and sandstone, concreted silica, lime, and ferrous oxides. Unlike most North American mountain ranges, Ozark's twist and bulge did not break, thus leaving uninterrupted strata. This is the story of the Ozarks, a history in earth and water. It's hard to overlook the red. Everywhere the earth is cut, there is red. As in our own blood, this color is an indicator of one mineral in particular, iron. In this case, old iron, dispersed and oxidized throughout the strata. It gets everywhere, leaving a stain of rust wherever it goes. Iron colors the clay and stone. There's so much clay. Clay defines definition, rather. Clay is an admixture of minerals and soil mentioned above. This clay has an identity. It's silica, iron oxide, carbon, manganese, etc., etc. This is the color of my place and the base of my palette. Let's look a little deeper. Levigate. To polish, smooth. To grind to a fine, smooth powder while in moist condition. To separate fine powder from coarser material by suspending in liquid. The procedure is straightforward. Taking small pieces of the material, a mortar and pestle was used to pulverize the rocks and pebbles. Sifted the powder through a mesh sieve to remove debris and coarse bits. Fine powder can be further separated by suspending in liquid. The next ingredient is water. To fill my jar, I go to the bottom of the valley where the watershed feeds the waterfall. The place is sanctuary. I'm filling my vessel with more than just water. This action, this intention, it matters. Let me explain. Phenomenology is the philosophical study of conscious experience through direct first hand observation. Seeking out and working material in the world teaches me about the world. There's so much you can learn from clay simply by squeezing it in your hand. This is water. Tell me about this water. What does it say? I'm learning to listen. This is why I make art. I'll ask my jar and camera are full. Energy is depleted. Experience gained. Items received. Water. I rest for the night. To continue the process, pigments are added to jars, and the jar is filled with the water of meaning. What truths does it reveal? The red clay suspends readily in water, 
as does iron oxide. Shale falls to the bottom immediately, as most of the ochre I found was concurrent with shale. Being able to separate the two in water greatly increases the purity. To levigate, give the water and pigment a quick stir. Wait a few seconds for the heavier material to fall to the bottom, then pour the liquid off the top. If the liquid you poured off may look like dirty water, but it contains the pigment. This can be filtered by pouring through a coffee filter, a piece of cloth, or a tea towel. This part takes a while. Be patient. While you're waiting, it's a good time to like and subscribe. Pigments are almost dry and there's one more process, one more element, and that is fire. Lucky for you, I already packed the kiln with boughs of cedar. I'm incinerating bones and eggshells in addition to some of the unprocessed pigments. The fire will also produce a couple of byproducts I'm interested in. Almost there. Behold, this was worth it, but the fire is cool, put a lid on it, and then check the results. Not everything was a winner, though there were successes. The ochre and clay didn't noticeably change color, only collecting a little ashes. The lid itself is used for collecting lamp black from the soot. Cedar is resinous and burns dirty. The result is a gummy comparison to the black I obtained from ochre earlier. Good experiment with this. Probably make a video on it. Ash from cedar, on the other hand, came out warm colored gray. It's kind of nice. The eggshells were obliterated. The bone survived ground into a light charcoal color, a couple of shades darker than the ash gray. The bone ash itself may prove indispensable in the coming future. Materials and process entwine in time. Water acts on earth, one epoch after another. Each color, each patch of light, and covers another portion of the world map. Where one is revealed, another is concealed. In our experience, we move through light, as we are the ones who carry the lantern. Remember this, here, this place, where you are.